Welcome back to Solo Adventures! My name is Livy, and it's been a long time since I've made a video like this. Um, did you miss me? Because I know that I missed you. I've been dealing with some health problems and some family issues over the past couple of months, and I just needed to take a step back from the channel for a while. But I'm here, back again, and I'm not anticipating having to take another break like that, at least for a while. Things were a little rough, I just wasn't able to make videos, but in the immortal words of Chumbawamba, I get knocked down, but I get up again. You're never gonna keep me down. So yeah, anyway, um, today's video is extremely special. Um, some of you might recall a long, long time ago um, when I promised to make a video revealing all of my PNP secrets, uh, how I make my beautiful cards and boards and tokens if I reached 1,000 subscribers. Well, at the time of filming this video, I'm sitting at 1,300 and some subscribers, so yeah, it's about high time that I start getting into spilling the beans. So I've never made a DIY video before, and I just kind of jumped in and started trying to record myself demonstrating some of my techniques. Um, but then I realized that I was spending a lot of time in that video just explaining uh, what material that I'm using. So I realized that I probably should make a video that's a little bit of a prequel to the actual DIY part and just explain the tools that you are going to need if you want to make um, PNP games, um, at least using the same techniques that I do. Technique and craftsmanship are very important for making a beautiful PNP game, but almost equally important is the tools and the materials that you use and um, put into the construction. So the tools that I'm about to explain are not going to be too exotic or too expensive. They should be pretty easy for you to obtain. And hopefully this first video will give you a little bit of time to assemble your supplies before we start getting right into the nitty gritty and I start showing you how I make my stuff. These are the materials that I use to craft all 56 of the 2020 BGG PMP contest games. With these materials, you're going to be able to make boards, tokens, cards, tiles, um, pretty much everything that you're going to need for a basic PMP, aside from any other additional components that you might want to use, for example, like meeples or pawns and um, custom dice are kind of a whole other kettle of fish to get into later, um, but this should cover the vast majority of PMPs that are out there. So maybe the most important uh, material tool that you're going to have to have in mind when making a PNP game is, of course, your printer. Um, that is what PNP stands for, print and play. And I think most people probably have a printer at home, but if you don't and you're in the market for a printer um, maybe specifically in mind for having the ability to make nice PNP games, um, there's a few things to take into consideration. So the two main types of home printer are inkjet and laser. So inkjet printers are um, a bit cheaper to get, and I think they're probably one of the more common um, home printers that you'll have, and they're perfectly fine. But in my opinion, laser printers are superior. So if you haven't bought a printer yet, or if you're thinking of upgrading, I definitely would consider a laser printer. Inkjet printers work exactly as they sound. They print with jets of ink, basically. And this ink that comes in the cartridges is very often water soluble. So if you're not careful and you get a little water, a little glue, a little paint, just some moisture from your hands on your PMP components, um, they might smudge. In addition, the ink that you buy for an inkjet printer uh, will eventually dry up. It will expire in time if you don't use it all up. So if you're just making an occasional PNP here and there, if you're not using your color ink very often, um, that's something to take into consideration. Um, laser printer color ink will last pretty much forever and you never have to worry about it expiring. But for the purposes of making PNP games, pretty much every printer is going to work for you. But uh, if you are thinking about upgrading your current printer, there's a couple of features that I suggest that you look out for. So the first of these features is automatic duplex. And this is amazing. So what an automatic duplex printer can do is um, it can print on both sides of the paper without you having to take the printed paper out and flip it around and put it back in the machine. It's very easy, very simple. Um, you end up saving more paper in the long run, of course, if you print on both sides. And if your print and play um, offers the option of printing double-sided, then your card construction is going to be all that easier. 
So yeah, definitely automatic duplex if you can get it. The second main feature that you're going to want to look out for is manual feed. And so what that is, is um, it's the ability to put in different shapes of paper, um, for example, like sticker paper or, you know, A5 paper, and to be able to put them in yourself. And this makes it much easier for your printer to handle these unusual kinds of paper. Definitely, uh, I like the flexibility of a manual feed printer. Last of all, if you want something very luxurious, um, get yourself a printer with a built-in scanner. I don't use my scanner for PNP all that often, but it can be extremely useful if you want to try to, um, for example, make your own PNP versions of an expansion for a game that you really like. Um, you can scan the components and um, get some of the icons off of the cards, for example. Um, or if you want to use your own artwork in making cards, then that definitely helps. Um, but yeah, not necessary, uh, but definitely nice. In case you were curious, my printer is an HP Color LaserJet Pro. If you don't have a printer and you don't want to buy a printer, um, you can of course go to a print shop. And I would recommend that in particular if you don't have a laser printer for a game that you really want to make nice. Um, you can have it printed very high quality on very nice paper. Um, these days there's even a lot of online services that you can use. Um, so you can send in your documents that you want printed, they print them off and they send them back to you. Okay, so the second major piece of hardware you're going to want to have is a laminator. It doesn't matter what kind of laminator, and in fact, uh, cheap is fine. I just recommend um, having one with a jam release switch if possible. My personal laminator is the Toyugo um, A4 laminator, and it cost me less than 20 euros. So, fair warning before you um, start going ahead with my methods. Um, the techniques that I use with my laminator are a little bit unorthodox, and I can't promise that you won't damage your machine in the process. Um, I've never really had issues with that, but we are going to be using the laminator in ways that the manufacturer maybe didn't expect us to. So try my methods yourself at your own risk. I will not take any responsibility for broken laminators. Um, if you're at all nervous, get yourself a cheap one. Of course, along with a laminator, you're going to want a nice big pack of laminator foils. Um, the ones I use are 80 micron and they are peach brand, but of course you can pick your own brand and if you prefer a different size of foil, well, that's up to you. Now we have one of the most important materials and that is paper. Um, what kind of paper should you use? The paper that I find to be the most flexible and all-purpose is 160 gram paper. I think this is the best all-purpose weight. Um, it makes cards that are um, the perfect amount of springiness, in my opinion, if you can print front to back. If you have to make cards in the gutter fold style, um, they're still pretty good. They're a little bit stiff, but they're still completely shuffleable, and I don't mind that they're a little bit thick. So yeah, in my opinion, definitely go with 160 gram paper if you're only going to buy one pack of paper. What I don't recommend for PNP is standard um, normal printer paper. This is 80 grams and it's just too lightweight for our purposes. Um, I've tried taking two pieces of printer paper and sticking them together to kind of make homemade 160 gram paper and that didn't work. So yeah. Um, Try to shoot for something that's at least 100 grams if you can. Next, you're going to want a good pair of scissors. Um, the sharper, the better. You can use just any old pair of scissors that you have lying around, but your hands will thank you if you have a really nice, heavy, sharp pair uh, because you're going to be doing a lot of cutting. Next comes one of my most used tools, and that is a corner rounder. Um, there's really no way around it. If you're going to make print and play cards and you don't want them to poke your hands when you try to shuffle them, you're going to want a corner rounder. So as I said, you're going to be using this a lot. So I recommend that you don't be cheap and just buy the cheapest scrapbooking corner rounder out there. Um, get something that's really nice, really heavy, and is going to last. There's basically a small fan base that has um, built up around the Katamaro Pro. And I totally understand why, because this is also my favorite corner rounder. Go with the Katamaru, and I don't think you're going to have any problems at all. Some really simple stuff that you've probably already got. Of course, you're going to want a pencil and an eraser. I prefer big mechanical pencils, but of course, that's up to you. And you're also going to need a ruler. 
Um, I prefer the transparent plastic ones because I think it's much easier to make more precise cuts, but any old ruler that you've got lying around, that's going to be fine. The next two items on my personal shopping list are a little bit more circumstantial and you might not use them all the time and um, it really depends on the kind of projects that you're making, but I do recommend in any case that you just have them on hand in case you need them. And these are a glue stick and a craft knife. So for the glue stick, it has to be a glue stick. It shouldn't be liquid glue. This is because if you use liquid glue and you get it on the cardstock, it's almost always gonna wrinkle and then it gets really hard to laminate. So just save yourself some trouble, get yourself a glue stick. The brands that I prefer are Prit Original or um, Uhu, U-H-U. I'm not really sure how you're supposed to say that. So this is all that I would consider basically necessary, but if you want to get fancy and um, you want to make your crafting experience a bit more luxurious, you can also spring for the following items. So one that you can go for would be a corkback ruler and a rotary cutter. Um, completely not necessary, but um, a corkback ruler is extremely nice because it's metal, your blade isn't going to cut through it, the cork on the back keeps it from um, shifting around, and the, the rotary cutter makes it extremely easy and extremely fast to cut even thick cardboard, and it makes token making so much easier. And of course, along with that, you're going to want a self-healing mat. Um, you don't want to be cutting on concrete or normal wood because your blades are not going to last very long. Next, I recommend a bone folder. Um, if you're dealing with a card making technique that involves a lot of folding, um, a bone folder will save your fingers so much trouble and will help you make really sharp creases. Um, I also would highly recommend a bone folder if you plan on making your own really nice um, game instruction manuals, which I will go into the making of in future videos. And finally, something that's totally unnecessary but just so, so nice to have is a paper trimmer. Um, I have used mine so much, it makes cutting out your cards just a just hundred times faster. Uh, I don't know how I could have made it through the PNP contest without using my paper trimmer. Um, get yourself one if you can. They're not all that expensive. You can usually get them for under 20 bucks. So completely worthwhile in my opinion. Some of them have interchangeable blades. Some of them have blades that are really hard to remove. So that's something you might want to look into. Um, I do know a method of sharpening your paper trimmer blades. Um, again, I will make another video about that. So yeah, that's basically it. This is pretty much everything that I use to make all of my PNP games. This will all be a little bit of an investment at the beginning, but it shouldn't be too crazy expensive. Um, the amount of money that you'll put into buying supplies will probably be the same or maybe just a little bit more. Um, than buying a brand new designer board game anyway. So um, if you think about uh, value, uh, in my opinion, PNP is definitely worth getting into um, because normal retail board games are expensive and PNP games are most often free. So that is it for your supplies checklist. Um, you have some time to gather up all of these materials if you want to be crafting along with my videos um, because it'll, it'll be a couple weeks before I make my next DIY video. Uh, I don't want my channel to be completely taken over with DIY videos for the next maybe even year or two because I have so many videos I want to make. For example, binding your own beautiful hardcover for Against Darkness books, um, all this fun stuff like that. So anyway, thank you so much for watching, uh, and I want to give an extra special big thanks to my patrons and to my heroic tier patron, Joshua Jumbles. So until next time, stay adventurous.